everyone, I'm Sidra and welcome to my channel, Ask Your Pharmacist. So I've been connecting with you guys through my videos for some time now. And I hope by now you already know that I'm a registered pharmacist in US. But probably what you don't know is that I'm a foreign graduate. Yes, I did my Doctor of Pharmacy degree from Pakistan. And if you are also a foreign graduate and would like to practice in US, then keep watching as I'm gonna share with you what steps I had to take in order to get my pharmacist license here in US. So the whole reason I'm posting this video is because I've been getting a lot of messages and comments here and on Facebook asking me what is the process of becoming pharmacist in US and what it looks like to be a pharmacist. Do I prescribe? If not, then what do I actually do? So I thought I'd post a YouTube video and explain the whole process and help those of you who want to work as a pharmacist in US but are confused about where to begin. So let's start. But first, a little intro on what are pharmacists and what do we do? Well, pharmacist is a well, pharmacist is a healthcare professional who dispenses medical prescriptions and advises you about them. Yes, we actually do way more than just putting pills out of the big bottle, pouring them in small bottles and slap the label on. Pharmacists, in fact, play a key role in helping patients with chronic diseases, help patients with better medication adherence and clinical outcomes. We also help in medication reconciliation, provide preventive care, counsel patients on side effects, interactions, and much more. That's why you might see a pharmacist at a drugstore, grocery store, or at a hospital. We are easily accessible to community, like you can literally walk into pharmacy without appointment or simply call us to get answers to your health and pharmacy questions. All right, now that the pharmacist intro is out of the way, let's talk about education pathway to become a pharmacist in US if you are foreign graduate. So I graduated from Punjab University, Pakistan in 2013, batch 2008 to 2013. If any of my batch mates are watching, a big hello and I miss you all. Anyways, I originally graduated in 2013 with a five year doctor of pharmacy degree and the same year I moved to United States and took five steps to become a licensed pharmacy. Okay, so step number one is to take FPGEE exam. To apply for this exam, you have to get your foreign degree evaluated. Most of the evaluators require that your pharmacy school mail a copy of your degree and other credentials straight to them, or you can just mail it to them with an intact seal that verifies you have not opened the documents. And this is what I actually did. So basically, FPGEE is like a board exam except that it doesn't give you a pharmacist license. It's just to prove that your pharmacy education is, is equivalent to pharmacists that are educated here in US. The FPGEE has 200 questions. When I took this in 2014, it only had multiple choice questions all throughout the test, but now they have since modified the test to include several formats, so be sure to check their bulletin the test is offered once a year, so it's important that you apply ahead, get approved, and save yourself from last minute trouble. You can check this link to get more information on registering for this exam, and I'll also put the link in the description for you. Okay, so step number two is take TOEFL. It's an English language exam to evaluate your English reading, writing, and speaking skills. An important thing to know is that TOEFL is administered all over the world, but for NABP to accept your scores, you can only take it in US, US territories, Australia, New Zealand, and most of Canada. Keep in mind that step number one and two are interchangeable, meaning you can take them in any particular order. So TOEFL could be your step number one, and FPGEE, could be step number two. So in California, once you have your step one and step two done, you're eligible to apply for intern pharmacist license. It took me about six to eight months to complete step one and two, 
before I could go to step number three. Now step number three requires the most patience as now you need 1500 hours of internship. At this point, you have intern pharmacist license though and you would have to have visa that's permitted for employment because internship is considered work and you can't work on just a tourist or visitor's visa. Every state is different when it comes to their internship requirements, but for most of America, it's 1500 hours. So an intern pharmacist, An intern pharmacist can basically do anything that a licensed pharmacist can do except for final check. In California, we are required to do part of 1500 hours of internship in community setting such as retail pharmacy and another part in institutional setting like a hospital pharmacy, a sterile compounding pharmacy or a long-term care pharmacy. I did mine for the most part at Walgreens and I'm actually very thankful to them. As some other big retails, I won't take their names, but they won't even accommodate or give me a chance since I was a foreign graduate. Anyways, once you have completed your hours, you can now apply for NAPLEX and the CPJE or MPJE, and you can take them in any order. Okay, so next up is step number four which is to take NAPLEX. Effective in November 2016, the NAPLEX has increased the number of questions from 185 to 250, and the questions are in the same format as FPGEE. One of the main differences, though, is NAPLEX is more clinical, and also the questions are more scenario-based, like you will see uh, most of the questions presented in a patient scenario format with patient's profile alongside their medical history, and several questions following it. Then you will have to make your clinical judgment to answer these questions properly. Now you're allowed maximum five attempts to pass the Netflix, and after a failed attempt, you must wait 45 days to take your next attempt, which is quite bizarre, I think. You can register to take Netflix on the NABP website. Here is the link, and I'll put the link in the description for you as well. Take the law exam, which is MPJE for all other states or CPJE if you are in California. So basically, it's a pharmacy law and regulations part of the board exam. If you are taking MPJE, it's going to be 120 questions long and the passing score is 75. And if you are in California, like I am, you'll take CPJE and it has 90 questions, all multiple choice. So once you have passed the Netflix, and the MPJE or CPJE, now you can apply for your pharmacist license and start your exciting and well-rewarded career as pharmacist. Okay, so the question I get asked a lot is, do I recommend being a pharmacist in US? Absolutely yes, because as a pharmacist, you have so many opportunities to grow and learn. It's actually a very well-rewarded career, both financially and I would say socially. Like I feel the best part of being a pharmacist is that we are so close to the community and can easily help them with their health and pharmacy needs. Literally, I can go on and on and talk about the benefits of being a pharmacist, but that would be kind of out of context for this video. So I'll put a separate video on pros and cons of becoming a pharmacist um, sometime next week. So do look out for that. For now, I want to thank you so, so much for making till the end of this video. I hope I was able to give you a clear and straight direction to help you on your journey of becoming pharmacist in the US. I'll see you next time with another great video on health and pharmacy. Bye.